What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel and today we are going to be focusing on Rude Hollett, a deep dive on who many consider now the best player in the game. Is he the best player in the game? We're going to find out. I'm going to show you three different builds and talk a couple of pros and cons about this card. But he's definitely one of the most unique cards that they've ever released, especially now with a double booster and visionary pass. And look, the stats speak for themselves. Insane stats with a player that goes 35 levels, he's got the double booster, you can literally play him as an AMF, you can play him as a DMF or a C an RMF if you train him up, a CMF, pretty much anywhere you want to play him, you can play him. And that's always going to be good for sub tactics if you're looking to play the game a little bit more creatively. Also as a center forward as well, right? You can see he can get up and down the pitch, he can score goals, he can assist. He's an excellent knock-on merchant as well for, you know, corners, free kicks, um, and just a real big presence, right? So this is the first build for an attacking midfielder that is just your traditional hole player. Playing with the main emphasis being on his play style, his actual player ID, and keeping all his stats pretty much tied perfectly balanced to an attacking midfielder. That's going to be your main pivot and your main link-up man with your striker. But speed, acceleration, kick and power, jump and physical contact, all insane. 86 balance, 86 stamina, 90 dribbling, 85 tight possession, 85 low pass, and 80 finishing with 88 heading, and 85 attacking awareness. Ball control, 91. Insane. It's a ridiculously good card. You don't need to think too much about this card, really. 3, 7, 10, 11, 6, 6, 0, 0, 0. And that's the build, right? So this is the second build. Now, this is a very different build. And to be honest with you, I would only recommend this build if you don't have a very good center midfielder. Now, for all of Rude Hollett's builds, right? You have hard worker on him here for aggression, acceleration, physical contact, and stamina. Obviously, you're not going to be changing those boosters because they're hard to come by. But... Most of the cards are going to need aerial superiority and probably long range curler. There's a couple of other that you could give as well. You could have acrobatic clearance as well if you're playing him more into this role. I would definitely 100% add on acrobatic clearance for this role here or low lofted pass because you do have visionary pass and you have long range uh, shooting. So you don't need as much into finishing or low pass, especially as you're going to be overcompensating with this build with massive 94 kick and power. You've got 93 speed, you've got 95 jump, 99 physical contact, all his defense stats over 80, and also have an 85 dribbling, 86 ball control, and 86 aggression, which is going to be key for this card. But it's the 99 physical contact and 90 stamina for this card, just with his player ID, is going to be insane. It's a very different build, as I said. It's not really one I would recommend too much. 0, 2, 6, 3, 9, 10, 11, and 1. And last but not least, we have the center forward Rude Hullet build as well. Now, this one, again, I do recommend probably the first build if you're looking to get the most bang for your buck out of Hullet. But this is probably one of the most unique center forwards that you can have, right? This is a 90 attack and awareness. You've also got 90 curl. You've got 90 jumping and 91 balance with 95 physical contact and 98 acceleration. It's insane. You still have 85 finishing. You still have 86 dribbling, 87 ball control, 85 speed, 86 kick and power, 80 plus stamina. The jumping is at 90. It's, it's a ridiculous center forward card. Now you can play around with this a little bit, right? Um, this is the build that we went for here, 8, 0, 7, 15, 2, 6, and 0. So you will notice, obviously, that dexterity, we've used a lot of points for that. Now, depending on how you want to train him up, I think the key to this card is his attack and awareness being as high as it possibly can, being at that 90. But if you don't want the dexterity to be that high, 85 will be more than enough. If you want to max out his finishing or you want to max out other stats, right? You can actually get his finishing here with this build to 90 finishing. I'm kind of torn on 90 finishing, lads, especially with a player like this, because you know what you're going to be getting with him. It's not really that deep of a kind of a comparison with him, right? You can also have a version like this where you've got the 90 finishing and you've got the 92 jumping and 94 curl. It's it, To be honest with you, you can overcompensate a lot now for the game with the way that the player skills work. Long range shooting, outside curl. You're not going to have really the, the, the full use of his visionary pass here. Um, so that's why I think that Hullet is probably best suited to that position there. In my opinion, he's best suited as a link man. It just depends what formation that you want to go with him. Because he is a beast. We know he's a beast. You're probably asking yourself the question, is the old rude Hullet that far behind the new one, right? As a centre forward, no. 
that's probably the main role that people are going to use him for. I see a lot of top rank guys using this Hullet, or the old school Hullet, or even the original Hullet, as a centre forward, because he can just do it all. Now, to give 90 attack and awareness to this Rude Hullet on the left, the whole player, you are going to have to sacrifice some other stats, but this is how they compare, right? And again, you've got the speed at 85 versus 90, you've got the acceleration 98 versus 93, you've got the kick and power lower on the new version double booster, Netherlands Dutch trio root hullet, but you've got higher physical contact, you've got better balance. So these cards are pretty much identical if you are going to be playing as a centre forward. I would probably just shade it with the new one if you're looking for more physicality and you like to play a bit of possession, right? But I just feel like that there's very little between these two cards. I think where the biggest comparison comes is whole player versus whole player. For me personally, it's a possession-based player that plays out wide and that sits on the ball quite a lot, slows the play down and doesn't really play, you know, balls to the wall, fire versus fire. I like to kind of extinguish a lot of what the opponent is trying to do. That's where a whole player is going to come into it. Usually whole players, right, by their very nature and by the way that the game is actually built and coded and the way it's, it's balanced, usually whole players are best suited to guys that can run and gun and really are a centre forward without the finishing. That's how I see whole players. They're centre forwards that don't have those massive high uh, 95 finishing stats and pretty much all of the good and the best whole players in the game currently. My favourite is probably Musiala. You're going to see that he's going to have very high dribbling stats, insane speed and acceleration, and really high balance into the 90s. And that's kind of what sets them apart because they're able to pick and pop and run and gun. So again, that's a personal choice for you guys as well to make. All in all, I do think that Hullet is a fantastic card. Is he my favorite card in the game as of now? I'm going to say no. I still think that Patrick Vieira is the best pound for pound. If I'm building a squad, Vieira is my main man. And also, do I think that with V4.2, they're going to bring in new game mechanics? And will they bring out other versions of these cards? I definitely think so. So let me know what you guys think of Hullet, lads. I will talk to you guys in a bit. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like this kind of new format, let me know as well. Peace.